Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today we are doing a part two of our fertility journey. We wanted to do kind of a sit down video to collect everything in one video because I know for me when I was going through and watching other couples fertility journeys, um, everything was kind of spread out in different vlogs and it was really nice to find those couples that sat down and like talked through everything um, just from an edu educational standpoint um, to kind of see like what they went through. So in this video, we are going to go over everything that we have gone through since the last fertility video that we filmed. Um, we're going to go over our treatment, the cost of it, the ins and outs, mm -hmm. the goods, the bads, and just kind of side effects, side effects <laughs> all the fun stuff. Um, so yeah, that's what this video is going to be about today. And then we will kind of set you up for what's coming next because our journey is not over, unfortunately. Um, so we have some things coming up as well that we'll announce at the end of the video. Today, we are happy to share that we're partnering up with Fertility House Calls um, to kind of bring awareness to those very first steps of seeking fertility help, which in my opinion are the scariest. Um, I know after we got our diagnosis, um, taking those first steps were really uncomfortable and scary and intimidating. That's kind of where Fertility House Calls steps in. Um, they just make the process, the initial process, a little bit more comfortable for you. Um, it's super simple to navigate. You just go to their platform, uh, you type in your zip code, and they help connect you to an initial virtual consult with a fertility specialist in your area. All from the comfort of your own home, um, it's offered nationwide. So if you are kind of sitting where Ryan and I were sitting in the last video where you just don't know where to begin, definitely um, check out Fertility House Calls. Uh, I know taking that first step is so uncomfortable, so it just makes it easier um, if someone else can do it for you and you have a little bit of assistance. Yes, we'll just kind of pick up where we left off in the last video and it's, what was it? We were going to our our first appointment, I think, with Aspire. Oh yeah, we we hadn't even, that's right, oh my yeah. gosh. So we got our diagnosis. Um, I was diagnosed with low ovarian reserve. My AMH levels were extremely low, meaning that I don't produce as much, as many eggs as, as I should of someone my age. I basically produce the amount of eggs as someone in their mid 50s and I'm 33. And since I've shared my diagnosis on social media, I've had so many people come out and let me know that they were actually diagnosed with the same thing. Um, some people in their 20s, early 20s even, and it just broke my heart. Um, but it was actually really nice to connect with so many different women and couples who were going through the same thing. Um, so after that, we had our first fertility appointment and she recommended IVF pretty much immediately. Yeah. She said with everything with Ash's age being under 35 and with that level that going straight to IVF would be a, the best chance for us right now. And then also to be able to get more eggs to potentially freeze for future transfers. Yeah, because that was something that was important to us was we wanted security for the future. Um, we obviously wanted multiple you know, embryos and lots of eggs to choose from. So that was important. And obviously you can go the IUI route. We did talk about the IUI route, but she just recommended immediately, like, let's start IVF. So, I mean, probably, I think after that very first appointment, they started me on birth control, like mm -hmm. the next day. It, it goes so fast. Like when I say it went fast, like we were medication the next day, like da, 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 da. So it was a lot at one time. Um, I got on birth control and we um, picked out our plan, our IVF plan. I know with different clinics it's obviously different, but with ours you could pick like the basic plan or you could pick the plan with genetic testing. Mm -hmm. That was the main difference. Yeah, and it was a pretty big cost difference. Yeah. We'll get into that later, but um, it was a big cost difference. But that was important, important to us. The genetic testing was. Yeah, we definitely wanted to not have not look back and wonder what if we had known something. And have regrets and yeah, you know stuff like that. And especially if, with the low amount of potential embryos that we would be getting, we want to know that the quality is great. First of all, we paid for the IVF, which that was like 
that day mm. was not good. <laughs> that was um, a lot. But then not only do you have to pay for the IVF, then it's like pay for the, drugs. the drugs on top of it are an extra amount. Um, so then you have to call the pharmacy, pay for that. They're literally overnighted to you. They were overnighted to us. We got it in the mail. And this is before we even knew what to do with them. It was really overwhelming. Yeah. We opened the box and we were like, what is all this? Lots of, lots of things. Lots of things. Yeah. Our and things don't just come out of the box to be used. You have to mix things and yeah lots to be done so then we went back to our fertility clinic um because they want to make sure that you're like they won't do anything unless you're paid for like you don't yeah. get your calendar you don't get anything unless you pay and so we paid and i know um a lot of the questions that we've been getting are you know does insurance cover it yes there are depends on your insurance certain times where your insurance yeah. covers if you work for a big corporate company i think most likely those plans are really good and it'll cover at least like one round of, of ivf i believe yeah and i've seen people like that i've just talked to on instagram their insurance covers like three to four rounds so so nice yeah, like if your lot. insurance can cover it that's amazing um our insurance obviously we have like oh shit insurance <laughs> yeah <laughs> they do not cover ivf yeah. catastrophic insurance yeah we paid for it and then we had to order the meds so then, you know, as soon as we paid for the IVF, we got our calendar, um, you know, she brought me back in. She showed me how to use all of the medication. Like you mix this, you use this syringe, then you put this on. And it was just like overwhelming. And meanwhile, Ryan has to sit in the car. He's yeah. on FaceTime. So I'm trying to like soak all of this up and it was a lot to process. I couldn't hear anything of what the explanation was about all the drugs. I got in the car and I'm like, you, you got that right. And he's like, I couldn't hear anything. Got the meds and then... The, uh, then we started started meds and another question that I always get is how long does it last because I was under the impression that you were gonna have to give yourself like 10 shots in the stomach for like 20 days but that's not the case at all um, it's actually about two weeks it just depends on your protocol my um, I, I, I think we did 14 days yeah maybe like roughly two weeks 12 to 14 days of shots and it's, it's one like shot in the morning four in the evening yeah. and um yeah so it was the shots they don't hurt at all you literally don't feel them going in one of them burns really badly um when the medicine goes in but the needles are so small it was like nothing um and I actually like side effect wise I was good um, up until the last three days, I was just hit with this like severe nausea and I know everyone's different, but I was under the impression that like the mood swings were going to be insane and you were going to be tired and feel bad. And, uh, but I felt great. Like the first, like almost the whole cycle, I felt amazing. I had more energy than I ever had. I was working out every day. I was eating like crazy. It was, it was amazing. And then those last three days, I just was beyond nauseous like I couldn't even get out of bed it was awful yeah. um and then at that point you're going to appointments every other day to um see how your follicles are growing so it's like you have to get in the car and it's like well cool. towards the end of the 14 days you're pretty much going to an appointment every other day to get an ultrasound to see yeah. how and blood work and blood work yeah to see how your hormones are looking and to see how your follicles are growing and we had how many follicles at the end? Oh, we just looked. I think we had like eight follicles. Maybe it was six. Yeah, it was a low number because of my, you know, low AMH. Like normally I think you would have like 20 something, but we were so happy to have eight or whatever number we had. I think we had six. Six, okay. Yeah. That's right, we did have six. So... Then, you know, when you go to your last appointment, they look at everything and say, okay, you're ready. Then you have to give yourself a trigger shot. The needle is the quite large. Long. It's like two and a half inches or three inches. And it's thick too. I'm going to say it's like this long. It's a big one. And it goes in your hip. So luckily that one does not go in your stomach. Um, so Ryan gave me that one. I, I, I don't know how people give that one to themselves. <laughs> that, they, was, that one's rough. Yeah. That, but actually I didn't feel it going in. Like, when I went in with it, like it, it was hard. It felt weird, like going that deep into the side. Like it felt like you were stabbing somebody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't feel it at all. I'd iced, I like iced my hip, and he did it, and I thought he'd actually backed out. 
I was like, I remember yeah. asking you, did you back out? And he was like, no, I didn't. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, uh, two days later, so you give the trigger shot. Two days later, you go in for your egg retrieval. So this is where they take your eggs. And we were under the impression that we were going to get six eggs, but we ended up getting eight. We got eight. Eight eggs. So it's, we were so happy. I was like out of anesthesia, like... We got eight. <laughs> <laughs> and video of that too. He does. Say hi to your mom. Where's my hair at? She took it off. Hey, say hi to your mom. Hi, mom. We got eight. We got eight. <laughs> Not five. Not five. Just eating some pretzels now. I don't really remember anything. I know. Eight. You got eight. We said five. Yeah, I know. We thought we were going to get five. We got eight. This is like, um, what they give you on the airplane. We got eight eggs, and it is, it's just a waiting game. You have to wait X amount of days to see how many were mature, X amount of days to see how many fertilize, X amount of days to see how many embryos you have. Yeah. And then they get sent off for genetic testing, which is another, like, one to two weeks. So it is... A waiting game, but we had eight eggs, seven fertilized, seven were mature. Seven were mature, yeah, after a few days, mm -hmm. I think. We ended up with three embryos. And then we got three embryos that went off to genetic testing. Mm -hmm. And that's where we, things kind of fell apart for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. We... And we were so grateful, um, obviously, but we ended up just getting one perfect embryo. Yeah. Of the three, they said one after testing was not viable. It, it just wouldn't have, have made, had made a, a healthy pregnancy. pregnancy. Yeah. <clears throat> and one of them was in the middle, like, like a gray area called mosaic. And that is just a, a gray area. Like it could go either way. Uh, it had like a, a lowish amount of abnormal cells, I think is what they said. And then there was one that was fully normal, no abnormal cells. And that was the one they were saying that, that this is the good one, basically. So that one's in the freezer. That is in the freezer. It's frozen right now. Downstairs. Um, <laughs> it's in our freezer, actually. The, it was like the most conflicting emotions that I've ever had in my life because you are so devastated that you just spent all of this time and money and put your body through so much to get one embryo when you would have when you were hoping for four mm -hmm. or five but you're just so happy to have that one and that could be like your potential future baby so it's it's just the weirdest like roller coaster of emotions um that i've ever been yeah. through our family and my mom was like the same way she was like crying because she was like happy and sad and I was yeah. like, it's just so weird um and we found out the gender we did find out the gender of the good one and the medium yeah one so we know both genders <laughs> and um we had to make a decision pretty quickly on if we wanted to move forward with another egg retrieval, or if we wanted to do a transfer of the frozen one. After talking about it with the doctor, <clears throat> and considering, again, like Ash's age, and how many eggs she has left in reserve, the doctor was basically like, it makes more sense for you to do another round than to just transfer this, because if she got pregnant, we'd have to wait an entire, almost year, to try again with IVF, who knows what her egg count might be at that point. So what we decided to do was go through another round of IVF that we're in the middle of right now and <laughs> try and get more healthy embryos that we can have frozen. But I think depending, you know, no matter how this, this one goes, I think this is going to be our last one for now. Um, even if we don't get any healthy embryos out of this cycle that we're in the middle of right now, um, I think we're done for this time. Um, I'm not saying we won't do it again, 
but it's a lot. Um, I'm not going to get into the specifics because actually the next video is going to be more of like a deeper dive into, it's not going to be a sit down like this, like we're kind of sitting down and going over how this cycle went. With this next cycle, we've been filming in depth everything um, in real time. So you'll be able to see everything and like how it's going. I don't want to give anything away, but um, that'll be the next video. So yeah, we um, did decide to go through with the n another round. And obviously it's like I said, it's not ideal. It's not ideal for your body, for your mental health, because like what they don't tell you is that the second round is so much harder on your body. I didn't realize that until we started, which you'll see in the next video, but um, it definitely is not been as easy as the first one yeah uh it's been a lot harder um sorry the camera got hot and just turned off and neither one of us remember what we were it talking about <laughs> we decided to do the another round and another round. i'm honestly like and another I'm, round is and a whole nother round like another two two-ish weeks of drugs and shots all over again yeah and another full retrieval yeah um and G moving into like the cost that's kind of also one of the reasons that we decided to do another round back yeah. to back because if you want to go into the cost so the cost for the the package we picked with the genetic testing the fee for just the fertility clinic is twenty thousand dollars and the meds they told us it can range. It'll be between like four and six thousand. I think is what they said. Ours were right about like thirty five hundred for the first round. We were so happy. Yeah, and for the second round, it looks like they've been right around four thousand. But we didn't have to pay twenty thousand again for the second round. Um, for the second round, all we had to do was pay half that. Essentially, we had to pay ten. So if you just want to move forward with another egg retrieval, you just pay an extra 10 instead of the full 20. Right. So. So all in all, for two rounds, it's roughly in the, the $40,000 range for everything, including the medications. There's a, there are great resources though. Like our clinic had um, really great payment options. Um, there's a place called Future Family where you can finance through Future Family and you get like a fertility coach. Um, so there are tons of different mm -hmm. options. I know that was like a huge question that people were asking me was like, does insurance cover it? Are there payment plans? Can you like yeah. finance or do you? There's specific banks and companies that all they do is fertility lending. We, we discovered that too. And there's, there's multiple, I think every, <clears throat> every fertility clinic probably works with a few, a handful ones. You just have to look at them and like what their rates are, uh, what are their payment terms look like and how long of a loan term can you get, all that kind of stuff because they're all going to be different. You can see what's going to be the most competitive for you if you're looking at that. And I do remember our nurse, Rachel, she said that things move a lot quicker if you don't use insurance. Um, she asked if we were yeah. using insurance and I said no and she said good because things move so much faster without insurance Approvals being and involved. paperwork and yeah. just involving lots more But you better things. believe if our insurance covered it. Oh yeah, if our insurance covered we it, we would have been using it. We would have been using it. But that was at least kind of comforting to us because knowing that we weren't using insurance, it was like, okay, I guess that's like one good, like one positive thing that came out of it. Yeah, we can move faster. <laughs> can move faster? I don't yeah. know. I'm telling you, like, this whole process just moves so fast. I mean, it's just crazy how fast. It's like they start the next day, and then you do this, and then this, and then this, and then you're at the doctor's office every single day until your egg retrieval, and then it's like it's done. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, well, I think the cost will also range where you're you're located at. I think it's gonna be definitely gonna be different by country. Ours was at the higher end of the spectrum. Yeah, our, ours is the higher end. From what we've learned and what we've heard from other people and. South Texas uh, area, like people come very far to go to the clinic that we're using. That is, just, it's in San Antonio. Lucky enough to only be you know fifteen minutes away, but it's it's one of the higher end Texas clinics that has a really high success rate overall. Um, so that's why we chose to go there. But it, it will range, you know, if you're in Florida or like Montana, I'm New sure York. there's going to be yeah, New yeah. York is probably even more. It'll just range 
based on your location. And that's pretty much our first cycle beginning to end, exactly what happened, what we got out of it, um, and we move forward with the new cycle that okay. we're documenting now that we will hopefully go live in the next few weeks. Um, we just want to get a lot of footage. Um, for you, I'm taking the camera into the doctor's appointments. My doctor, I, I finally just got consent to do so, so that's been like really interesting and super helpful. And I can come in too now. And Ryan so can come in too now. No more is, sitting in the car and FaceTiming. Which is great. Very, very good. Very excited about that. <laughs> yeah. We just had our first one yesterday. Together. It was his very first time in the room, um, so that's exciting. Oh, well, he can come in during the egg retrieval and any of like the transfers, he can be there mm -hmm. um, for major things. But for smaller appointments, he used to not be able to come, but now he can. So Yeah, I could never come for just updates and ultrasounds. Yeah. And, and he felt like he was missing out. Well, yeah. So. Just not being a part of this important process and being there for your person. It was very hard to deal with. Yeah. But now we get to be in there. It's nice for me too, because you get like scary and you feel alone and it's just it's a lot so I'm thankful that he gets to come in now because it's just like night and day feeling for me so we're in much better spirits I think mm -hmm. you know once you get past accepting the fact that this is your journey and this is your path it gets easier um, it was a rough road for a few weeks mm -hmm. um, feeling like ashamed and not worthy and just embarrassed and just all these different emotions, you go through everything. Um, you get to a point of acceptance, and once you can accept that this is what's happening, I think moving forward, just like in the highest spirits possible, and staying as positive as you can for your body, for your partner, mm -hmm. for the process, the process is easier if you are accepting and, and positive. Um, it's hard to do sometimes, but. Very hard. Um, but yeah, we're excited for the next video because you yeah. get to see more, but we, we did feel like we needed to do a sit down to share the first process yeah. in one video and how it went just in case you are watching the first one and then you're like, well, what happened next? This is what happened next. And then we'll keep doing them, the fertility vlogs, um, moving forward. But we thought this was kind of an important piece of the puzzle. So, but that is where we're at. That's where we're at. And until the next video. Yeah. Which will be in a few weeks, hopefully. Mm-hmm. All right. Camera's getting hot again. I hate this camera. I know.